Jade were looking down on her sons now, I think she'd be very proud of who they are and what they've become and what they're doing and the struggles they go through. She struggled and I think she'd be proud of the way they've got through the things that they've got through. The first time I met Jade was just after she'd found out she had stage 3 cancer. During the interview, it was clear that she was devastated that she wasn't going to be part of her son's lives. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with, ever. Yeah, I'm most scared that I'm going to die. That's when I saw a change in Jade. Her emphasis was all about making sure her boys, Bobby and Freddy, had the perfect life after she was gone. And that's when she agreed to do things like OK Magazine and do things like the Living TV show. People criticised her at the time and said, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, it's distasteful that you're selling your illness for money. But Jay didn't care what they were saying. All she cared about was making sure those sons were well cared for. Over the years when I had done shoots with, with Jade, she and her boys were always so close. There was a perfect bond. They were always running around, they are having the best time, and she would have fun with them, she'd have a laugh. She was a great mum, but it was really heartbreaking because she was weak and poorly, but she still managed to make sure that the boys didn't realise that she was. Like you're bald. Like you're bald like me. Good boy. Good boy. They were too young to know what, what, what that was about at that point. But it, felt, it felt very unfair, and it makes you realise that life can be unfair. But then on Mother's Day, we finally had the news. Jade had died at home. The boys were kept away. It wasn't right for them. After Jade's death, Bobby and Freddie went to live with Jeff. And we have a Mother's Day every, every month so that those special occasions don't seem so overwhelming for them. Jade always wanted the boys to have a good education, so the two boys started out in, in, in private education and Jade was always very keen for them to, to learn and to, to broaden their minds. Well, that was always one of the things she said, I want them to know things that I didn't know. They had five or six years of living with their mum and know who she was and even though that's a long you know they're young and they forget things they still remember her big present there we go aye aye captain for a lot of their lives were shielded from the horrible hard stuff of of jade's illness and i think now over the past 10 years they've obviously they've got the opportunity to look back and read about all the stuff that's happened with jade it has been tough for them. Even now, as teenagers, Jeff has said that they still find it hard. <laughs> no, no, babe. Thank you! <laughs> if Jade were looking down on her sons now, I think she'd be very proud that Bobby and Freddie have grown into very mature young men that she wanted them to become as well, who love their grandmother, and Jade would be over the moon about that, because another thing Jade was always worried about was, if she wasn't there, who'd look after her mum? Jade would be very proud of those boys for doing that. They're doing so, so well, yeah. I spoke to Bobby last Sunday. Um, he just stays in his pet like his mother. Fred's just a funny, cheeky mm. boy, but they're doing so well. There's never been anyone like Jade, and no one can ever replicate her. Mm.